much. Well, obviously, uh, this was a very well-received speech, and also a speech that had those on both sides bristling a little bit, but not when it came to some references of this historic figure. Okay, so take a listen. I think of the march which Martin Luther King led from Selma to Montgomery 50 years ago as part of the campaign to fulfill his dream of full civil and political rights for African Americans. That dream continues to inspire us all. And I am happy that America continues to be, for many, a land of dreams. I'm sure the uh, niece of Martin Luther King, Dr. Alveda King, liked that particular reference, as she should. But Alveda, I was also thinking that this was another reference to the immigration issues we have and that dreams and the opportunities inherent with being a citizen of this country uh, are, are goals to keep aspiring to, that that is essentially what Jesus would have wanted, certainly what your uncle would have wanted, what your dad would have wanted. you agree with that? That beautiful Latino accent that Pope Francis has reminds us of the commonality of brotherhood and sisterhood. He kept saying we have to be brothers and sisters and live together. Of course, his reference to my uncle is very touching. I loved uh, his reference to the sanctity of life as director of African American Outreach for Priests for Life. But Neil, it was amazing. You said that he had nine tenants on each side of yes, the statements, yes. and it was very balanced. I thought that was marvelous, Neil. Now, I don't know if that was deliberate. I don't know if I missed a few in there, but I was making a point of, of clicking through this as I was going, because, you know, the criticism that he got yesterday, I don't think that was entirely fair, because he did tweak the president on other issues uh, in, in his <laughs> remarks. But the, it, it was said to be sort of like a, a left-leaning speech, all about the, the environment and climate change when in fact he, he, he did call the president on some other issues. But leaving that aside, today he made a forceful point of only making passing reference uh, to, to the climate issue and, 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 and more in the bigger picture of you know, God's environment. But I did want to get your sense whether you think that was deliberate, whether you think that he didn't want to leave America, and I, we don't know what he'll say in New York or what he'll say in Philadelphia, that as either a conservative pope or a liberal pope, he seemed genuinely surprised on his plane, on his flight over here, that, that he's been called a lefty or a leftist. What, 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 do, you, what do you think of that? Because your, your dad and, and certainly uh, your uncle would, would, would try to avoid those type of labels as well. Well, it seems as though he has the heart of a parent, a father who's watching over all of his children. You know, as a mother and grandmother, when I would fix plates for my children or grandchildren, I'd put the same amount of peas on every plate, and I would stop and count so that nobody would think that their plate was better than the other plate. And that's what I'm feeling. He's trying to bring us together with a commonality of love and compassion, down to the immigration, the life issue, the marriage and family, any issue. He cares about the environment as well. So I believe he is balancing all of that. I had a chance to write him a letter, an open letter in Inside the Vatican magazine. I told him I like the Pope Mobile. He's a man of the people and he rides out among the people. So I really believe that he cares about everybody and that he's trying to get us to stop fighting each other and sit down at a common table. And that's the message, the beloved community from Daddy, Uncle Emil, Granddaddy, the, the table of brotherhood and sisterhood. I genuinely believe he's sincere and that's what he's promoting. Well, obviously you're a very different parent than I am because I like to just have my sons go off on each other by saying, I like him more than you. Oh, and no. And just to see what, oh, yeah, God, just to I mess with their it. heads. I figure it's, it's, it's good to start young. Um, but anyway, I, one other thing I want to leave you with, and Kira says he uh, takes off in his fiat here, and, you, and one of the things that's been said about the fiat, said about the fact that he he has skipped the Prada shoes that were, you know, well-known part of his predecessor. Uh, that he's living in a, if it's such a thing, as a, uh, one of the side rooms of, of the Vatican. That he uh, he prefers simplicity. Uh, there's a story that only a couple of weeks ago he he snuck out of the Vatican compound to get some eyeglasses, and he was very concerned when he got there that they not be new frames. He said his frames were fine. He just wanted new glasses. Uh, so in other words, I don't. I, I have a feeling 
he walks that walk. And, and, and he, 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 he inherently doesn't want to show off wealth and seems to have a problem with those who do. And that is, I begin to wonder that where he gets that anti-capitalist label. And, and, and that's what really gets a lot of the, the Wall Street types here, the big money types, annoyed at him, that he doesn't trust them. What do you make of that? I don't believe that's true. I believe that's just part of his personality because I, I travel with a group sometimes, but I'll carry my own bag. I'll say, give me a minute and I'll slip away somewhere by myself for a few moments. So it just could be a part of his personality. I don't think he frowns at others who like a little more fanfare. He just doesn't desire it himself. And I can understand that one, Neil. I don't know about that. And I take no, I understand where he comes from and what he experienced and how that influences his thinking on this. But he said that business is a noble vocation, especially if it leads to jobs. But once again, putting the onus on those who who have a little bit more to give a little more and you always hear that community come back and say we've given a ton uh, we do a lot for charity we do a lot in terms of foreign aid and they feel unappreciated they feel that this pope simply doesn't like them what do you say I believe he's saying the more you give the more will come back to you that was a song that we used to sing at church all the time you can't beat God giving so the more you give out the more you receive many people understand that and I know many people the, the philanthropists who have that uh, thought you, you, they just get more and more the more they give away the more they get and I believe that the Pope is gently pushing us towards that well they say sometimes not too gently but uh, it's always good singing by the way young lady I don't want you carrying your bags you don't want that. that I don't mind to get some, out if there. it's not too heavy. My chiropractor doesn't either. She says stop doing it. So. Alvita, <laughs> always an honor to have you. Thank you very, very much.